Peace, peace, peace. Hold on. Peace, 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 y'all. This is the third series. I am Shu Amin Ru. Amin Ra, excuse me. Shu Amin Ra. S H U. Shu. Shu Amin Ra. I do not go by the name of Chocolate Amin Ra. No more. I'm only saying it again just in case if you didn't see the first part, the second, and it's the third. I do not go by the name of Chocolate Amin Ra. I go by the name of Shu Amin Ra. Shu, if you look into Shu, it was a, a, de a deity, <clears throat> the wind deity, dealing with the sky, the natural resources. The reason why I changed my name is simple fact because as I started digging more, dealing with the word chocolate, I went with chocolate Simple fact because of the brown, the cocoa, the cocoa, the cocoa-ness, dealing with my skin of the earth, brown. But then I went deeper, it also can be used in the word to disrespect people. It gets, it's a, it gets real deep. But I realize that, I realize that um, excuse me, just put things together here. I realized that your name, it will identify you and or, or portray you. So when I begin to start to realize about the word chocolate, you know, I'm being honest. I talked to the ancestors. The ancestors, like I said, I could have kept the name, but it was up to me to change it. So for my preference, I needed to change the name. It didn't fit me the way I thought with dealing with my character, my behavior, in the natural sense. Not for show, for the natural sense. Now, understand this, it's not on my identification, it's not on my ID, it's not on my, it's not on none of my IDs, on my IDs is Denzel Snotty. Now, you got to pay to change your name, if you didn't know that, you have to pay to change your name, and you'll have to change your name all the way around, medically, where you work at, dental, social security card, birth certificate, all that. Don't let nobody fool you. So, you can call yourself these names and people will call you whatever name you want them to call you. But, legally, dealing with the system of things, you will have to bring forth identification with your name. Your name, your slave name, or your African name. And if you have a, if you was born with that African name, that means your African parents gave you that name and is on your birth certificate and your driver's license, then you good. Because nowadays, you know how people talk about, you got your slave name, you got your slave name. But we're not here for that. We're here to break down and discuss Latino or black. Now, in my next DVD, I mean, the next video that I will show you is when the Moors conquered Spain. Who are the Moors? African people. And if the Moors conquered Spain, what you think they've done when he was there with those people? You see, people don't understand this here. You think because people speak Spanish, that makes you white. You see, the problem is, the ignorance 
The ignorance is so deep. The ignorance is so deep courted. The hatred for black people is so deep. But if you ask them why you hate it, I'm going to tell you why they hate black people. Because they don't want to sh be socialized with slavery. Well, blacks is not the only one slaves. You got over 200 million people, 2018. Do your research, I always tell you that. Get your pencils and papers. 200 million slaves. And guess what? They all are not black. You gonna count them Russians? Russians got slaves. Now if you're dealing with the melanin skin, melanin, Thailand, China, Huh? Oh, you don't think you got no slaves in America? You don't think so, huh? Don't fool yourself. They here. And slaves doesn't mean you have to be from the continent of Africa. Don't get it twisted. Stop being ignorant. This is why this mix-up between a person that speaks Latin, speaks Spanish, they will socialize themselves as white. The Arabs conquered Spain. Islam, Islamic, Muslim, was in Spain. I'm gonna show you these clips. Europe was conquered, whether you like it or not. These clips I'm about to show you, so y'all can stop all this foolishness. I say, and I'll say it again, if your father happened to be a European descent, now if your father happened to be dark like me, born in Spain, what are we gonna call him? Huh? Because if he was born in Spain and he's dark like me and he speak Spanish, Spanish, he's from Spain. He just happened to be dark skin. And this is the problem what a lot of you have not realized because you skip. When you do your little research, you do not go to the part where the Moors was in Spain for 700 years. You do not go into where the Arabs conquered Spain. You do not put this in your information and you will not understand this, that black people was in there. And of course, they was had ways with the women over there. Of course. This is what they don't want to tell you. This is the information that's, that's laid off. Why you think a lot of Latin people's skin is melanin? They, a lot of them look light skin, different light skin, the tone, mulatto, carino, then red bone, then brown, light brown, dark brown, darker, dark color, my complexion, darker, Cesar Cruz, Cesar Cruz, Celia, the singer. The reason why you get black people a hard time is because you're trying to not socialize your identity with slavery. Who are you fooling? Doing that is to take away from your true identity. No matter how you look at this shit. Did, did I use foul language? Did I did I use foul language? Because at times some of you just you get on my nerves. You're not digging deep enough. You're not going down deep into the rabbit's hole to find out this true information. I'm the messenger. I'm giving you what you need. That's why I told you to 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 watch Hidden Colors. Let's talk about the Moors. It tells you the Moors was in Spain and Europe, and they outbuilt it. 
But when you Google stuff, they're not telling you that. They're not going to tell you. They'll give you um, Spain and who's in Spain and some of the indigenous people. But they're not telling you who helped Spain. They're not telling you how it was conquered. When I showed you some of the videos, I told you we're going to go deep here. You got to know your heritage. You got to have some kind of feeling. This is why I told you to get this DVD documentary. 1804, The Hidden History of Hades. Hades and Dominican Republic is a split, excuse me, it's a split island by a river. You got dark skinned people, that's in Haiti. And then you got the light skinned people, semi. That's the Dominican Republic. You know, to this day, they got issues with each other. But it's more of the light skinned people with the dark skinned Haitians. They family. You want to know in history that the Haitians and the Dominican Republic went to war? From the same island. The hatred of skin color. That's deep. That's deep. And because they colonized and they raped, took wives and all this kind of stuff with these women and then breed. They breed mulattoes and Cleos so they could turn against the slaves. They had the mulattoes and the Creoles to watch over the dark of slaves. And they all speak in Spanish now. All of them. So through time, guess what? That same Creole, the male, he sees him a, a nice little witch, if you will, slave. He want to have sex with her. Most likely he took it. But we don't want to discuss that, do we? You talking about you ain't African. How some of them, you sit up there and you talking about we got to go through the African thing again. How could you sit there and take your culture and just get rid of it like that? It's part of who you is. Well, the island of Puerto Rico. Do you know who landed these ships up in there? Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Hades, all these places, all these islands. They was inhabited by slaves. And the reason why slaves was there to help with the resources like sugar cane, especially in Hades and Dominican Republic, sugar cane ran rapid. That was big business. Do your research, you're gonna find out. Get to 1804, Google, cross reference, get the books. Let's go get into that video. Latin people, you black. Unless your father, point blank, came in the mountains, the Caucasian mountains, and he ain't never had sex, or his grandfather and great grandfather never had sex with no black person. And he got himself a Spaniard woman, and it stayed in their blood, and this happened to their great, 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 great grandchild, son or daughter, comes to America, comes to America, but the minute they interact with Americans, that bloodline is now torn apart. If that male comes over, we'll use him because you are who your father is. And he have sex with a female. They have a baby. I explained this to you before. And they have a baby. And let's say he has a son. That son is a direct line to Spain. But he was born here in America. 
And I'll say it to you again. He has a direct line to Spain, Europe. If that son stays in America and have a baby by a woman, she's from she's from Dominican Republic. But he loves her. He marries her. But she also was born here in America. They have a son. You know that bloodline is not the same. You think it's the same because you speak Spanish. Well, Dominican, the Dominican language, Spanish is different from Spain. The vowels the vowels in certain words are not the same. Just because you speak in Spanish doesn't mean all Spanish are the same. Some Spanish is broken Spanish, just like you got street Spanish here in America. If you understand, the Dominican Spanish is different from the Mexican Spanish. Mexican Spanish is different from Ecuadorian Spanish. Colombian Spanish, is, if certain words is not the same, you don't say everything the same. Remember that. Now some of you wants to be ignorant and try to play games. It real as real as it. Real as you can get. So that's why I said what I said. Once you cross over, you will be a descendant from Spain. A descendant. Or from the mother's side, you will be a descendant from Dominican Republic. But once you have them children here in America, they are American, born and raised. If you have took your son, you got a son, you got the woman, let's see, hypothetically, they, they come in and you get that Dominican woman and you take that woman back to Spain and you got her pregnant. Now, you could have got her pregnant in America, but the baby was born in Spain. That baby's Spain. The father language, he is a descendant of his father. He is what his father is. That bloodline stays the same. And his birthright stays the same. Because his birth is in Spain, not in America. But if he was birth, born in America, his blood ties would still be in Spain, but he was born in America. Don't let these people fool you. But let's get into the video, cause I got to, I got to put this. We gotta go deep in here. Out of the Western Sudan would come a great general, Tarak Ben Zad. A Jabaral Tarak. He would discover a weakness in Spain fighting the Goths and the Visigoths and the Vandals fighting among themselves. The dissident element in Spain would do something white people rarely ever do. They would sneak across into Africa and tell the Africans how weak the whites are and said, they are so weak, if you want to conquer them, it's an easy thing to do. Jabaral would send a testing army by 10,000 just to test their lines. He find it is easy. Then later, he would send 60,000. He'd take Spain. Now this is purely an African conquest. You are not dealing with the Arab conquest of Spain at first because the Arabs were not there at first. The initial conquest of Spain was African, not Arab. That army came from the Senegambia, now Senegal, and parts of what is now Mauritania. And when they moved over and conquered Spain, 
Madame Bagiba has written a book on it that bears the name Tyrak Ben Zad. The rock of Gibraltar is named after him. It's the hill or the mountain of Tyrak. Gibraltar is a corruption of his name, Jabaral. And she describes the army going into Spain. She says the army was black as ink. The general was blacker still. Meaning the general was the only one riding a white horse. So his blackness against that whiteness looked blacker than the rest of them. But the horse was better dressed than the kings of Europe with silk and brocade. Islamic armies, their ranks dominated by African converts, defeat the Romans and push on to the continent of Europe. In the process, they capture Spain. There, the Africans and Arabs create a rich, cultured, and powerful empire. So powerful, it endures for 500 years. The achievement of the Arabs at this time is they have driven the Europeans out of the Mediterranean. The Europeans now must go back into Europe. They have no empires, no great connections outside of Europe. And because of this, they ultimately would go into a period called the Dark Age. Militarily, the Africans took over Spain, and militarily, the Africans held Spain until 1240, while the Arabs did come in. But the military hold on Spain was African. Now let's look at the Africans and the Arabs that combination called Moors in Spain. What did they do? For a while in history, there was only two great universities. The University of St. Cori at Timbuktu and the University of Salamanca in Spain. And the African was solely in charge of the one at St. Cori and partly in charge of the one at Salamanca. They built public schools, they built public baths, they gave Spain the greatest civilization it has known before or since. They built a great university, Salamanca. They translated the great works of the masters of Europe, including a lot of work they had stolen from Africa. Europe had forgotten its own masters, the Africans translated. But their performance and the partnership between the Africans and the Arabs and the Berbers in Spain was a long and beneficial partnership and a fine moment in their history and in world history. The African and the Arab and Islam had united and held Europe at bay for almost a thousand years. It's showtime! Hurry, hurry, step right up! Introducing the star of our show, his name is... Moors.
Oh, I know I was a little upset. I know you were. You ain't see that coming, right? I know you did. Because what happened was, when you seen the other video, when they was talking about Latinos and, and Hispanic, and they basically were just giving you the, the landmass where Spanish-speaking people lived at. I hope you just take that in consideration and thinking that's all it was. This is why I had to go to John Henry Clark. John Henry Clark, a master scholar. He's my teacher. He did, but his work is still magnificent. You'll be able to understand where and how when Europe and Spain got its development because they didn't have it. They were barbaric. They were barbaric. The Moors came in there after they conquered them and reconstruct and gave them a new life. Gave them institutions, hospitals, running proper water, places where they can eat their food and stay away from the animals. So, you want to call yourself Spain? You want to be Europe? Or do you want to find out how Europe used to be? They were barbaric. And the evidence show you how barbaric they was. After centuries they was taught and gave all this knowledge, they barbaric ways came back and did what? come back down and destroy the people that helped them. Huh? Black people, Latino people, we all together. The problem is you let people put things in your mind and destroy you. You literally believe that you white. And that's it. Or there is white Spanish people. Yes, they are. You got to be born there, generation after generation from there. And no blood. And I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. Because you had them Arabs and you had the Moors, which were Africans, was all up in there. They reconstructed. They the one gave y'all civilization. So you figure close to a thousand years. I had said six to seven hundred years. Still, I was close. But, understand, in my next clip, I'm gonna show you my last final one, by using humor to find out the truth. Humor. I hope you got a better understanding where you come from. Latino, you black. Unless your people's from Spain and stay there and never mix. But I'm gonna tell you one thing, that'd be hard to do. See you in four. Shoot, I'm in raw. See you.